I asked her. I asked her if she wanted to go for a ride, a ride in the van. And this is the response I get. <laughs> it's okay. Woo, she's, she, she, she's waiting on me. He says, let's go. Huh? Off she goes. I left the door open. She'll just whoo, up in there. Hang on. Go on. Let me lock the door. I'm coming. All right. I'm coming. <laughs> She's ready. We're just going to go take care of a dirty little job this evening. Take a ride out in the country and uh, uh, empty that tank. <laughs> Dispose of it properly. like start it up she, she start this thing up all right um okay i'm sitting right here at the gate okay hold on just a second okay We've made it down to camp. I get some special permission. <laughs> I know people. Thank you so much, Steve. Gotta love my modern technology. <laughs> Hi, buddy. Hi. Um, yeah, the gate, it's kind of after hours. Now people that uh, at least down here, it's a yearly thing. They don't have spots for weekend uh, weekenders. It's you know, you at least your spot by the year. And uh, uh, anyway, they, they put new gates up, and uh, they got to have the code. So only you know tenants uh, have that code. Well, anyway, so I called the owner and I, I said, "Hey, buddy, how you been?" <laughs> And uh, he opened it, he didn't give me the code, but he has the ability to open it remotely. And that's what he did. So we are here, we're gonna take care of this. Be right back. Okay, the deed is done. And maybe while we're down here, we'll check something out. Oh, put that seat belt on. Uh, there was a railroad that came through here. And it used to go from a uh, little town here called Shenley, Shenley, Pennsylvania. Uh, used to be whiskey distillers there in a pretty big operation. If you ever heard of Shenley Whiskey? It's been out of operation for quite a few decades now, several decades. Um, but the railroad went from the Shenley area all the way up here and all the way down there. Now, I don't know why they tore all the tracks up well down that road that's actually that road's being has been been being used huh uh, but this section here is not but they tore the tracks back uh, out for a section here but that used to go up to uh, Baghdad Baghdad Pennsylvania there's uh, with some a steel mill you know foundry um, up there a bit I think they just do stuff uh, um, send all their stuff out by a truck now no more rail service needed. All right. I'll put it on when we get up to the gate. All right, railroad crossing. So we only come down this little bit, not even a quarter mile, and you can see you know, the tracks are still in place here. They, uh, I don't know. They might use it like for a little Y, a little place to, I don't know, maybe change cars out. Because the railroad comes across this old bridge over here, across the Kiski River comes down here I mean, they just left that little section in as a place to be able to switch cars or something if need be but uh the the uh it looks like let's go down to the, the station it looks like the oh wait a minute what's going on hang on here um, that's a tiny little post office <laughs> Gently. Look, they have this equipment here. They've torn the tracks out up here too, 
which now means that this locomotive up here is landlocked. I figured they close. This is a uh, Kiski Junction Railroad. They what they did was over the years, somebody decided to maybe invest and make a scenic railroad here. So after the businesses, um, you know, the foundry and everything was done with it, uh, this section, they invested in this little. And here's where you get your tickets. Okay. Oops, let me turn this off. Sorry about that. Um, there it is, the K Kiski Junction Railroad. So they would have like, you know, the Santa Claus. Uh, credit, credit. We're, we're not going to get out here just yet. Um, you get your tickets there. You can go on a, the Christmas ride or the Halloween ride. So different occasions in different weekends, they take small excursions. But this engine is now landlocked. Uh, maybe they're just fixing those tracks up there and not tearing them out completely. But they're all torn down at this end. So they're torn out in this end. In this end, the only way they're going to get that, if they sell that locomotive, Oh, because this is now closed. They closed this down. They don't do the, the rides anymore. Oh, girl, girl, please. Um, they, the place is closed now, permanently closed. So if they sell that locomotive, <laughs> they can only get it out uh, if they load it on a truck, which means they'll have to get a crane, get a truck down here, get a crane, and crane it over onto a truck. All right, the other little piece of history here is I mentioned about the whiskey uh, distillery. You see that big brick building down there? There used to be five of those, and I think there's only two left. There's that one, and there's one further up river, up the Allegheny River. Well, um, so some got so bad they fell in, others were running, uh, torn the rest of the way down. But I think that one still uh, is actually used for something or another. But so what happened here? Let's go up here for a minute. Maybe there's a better place to do this. I think this road, I've actually never taken this road. Allegheny Dam number five hydroelectric plant. All right, and lock number five is across the river. I don't know if people are allowed down here to fish. So part of this is fenced. Yeah, no swimming, uh, no trespassing. Yeah, no, no swimming. But somewhere, I think you can keep on going down past here and there is a place to go fishing and stuff. So you can come past here. So the other part of the story about the whiskey is, hang on here. Uh -huh. Let's make sure there's a friendly place to turn around easily. All right. <laughs> yeah, let's just leave it here for a minute. That looks all really, I could pull up there and back down there, but that's all real loose gravel. I don't want to get the, uh, the van stuck in gravel. <laughs> and by reverse, I gotta keep in mind my uh, reverse is still suffering. So, okay, let's stop here a minute. I'll tell you what happened. There was a big flood, okay? There was a big flood, just a minute. All right, so what happened was the whiskey distillers, uh, the Shenley Whiskey Distilling uh, Distillery was just up river here. And I think it was the 1936 flood. Was that the St. Patrick's Day flood? Or anyway, it was the 1936. The Allegheny, just historic flooding. The, the river flooded. And what happened was the wooden whiskey barrels, you know, they had them all stacked and lined up. And as they needed them, you know, they'd fill them and ship them. But they had a bunch of empties up here. Well, empty wooden whiskey barrels, when that flooded, a bunch of those wooden uh, whiskey barrels went floating down the Allegheny. And away they went. Now, those things cost money to for uh, Shenley to have uh, built for them. And so what they did was they offered a reward. Anybody, anybody in the, they put an ad in the paper, Anybody in the towns going down river from like Freeport's down there and then uh, Brackenridge, Terenum, uh, New Kensington, and all the way down to Pittsburgh, okay? So anybody, uh, so the ad was in the paper. If anybody recovered any of those whiskey barrels and brought them back up to the, uh, the, the whiskey, the Shenley Whiskey Distillery, they, they would buy them back off of them for retrieving them for them. Because you know, it was a lot cheaper than having them brand new ones made from scratch. They was happy to uh, 
you know, to give people uh, a reward for retrieving them. <laughs> so that's just a little history about uh, history about uh, Shenley. And uh, I see that railroad bridge down there. I don't know how well you can see that. Uh, but it crosses the Allegheny River here over to uh, this side. And that's where the Kiski River comes out into the flows into the Allegheny right here. And there was that other railroad bridge up here. Okay, so you could go across this bridge, then across the other bridge, and get here into Shenley. So that was kind of the old way. Uh, yeah, I call it the old way because it's cut off now. But you know, the, you can take the railroad goes the whole way down to Pittsburgh and obviously points beyond. Anyway, that's our little that's our little local history lesson today. Okay. We might make one other stop right up the uh, up the road here. On our way back, oh, see, in reverse it does this weird. It's, it's weird. It's more of like a weird thump, thumping, skipping, or I don't know. It's definitely the transmission, but it's just kind of a weird symptom. Like, like give me a minute. I don't know why they didn't build a road bridge from back there, uh, from the other side, like the railroad bridge from Freeport just across the river over to here would have made such a difference in this community. There are, you know, some homes scattered around, uh, a few, I don't know, generally population, I don't know, maybe a hundred people or something. <laughs> Not a lot of people. Because of its inaccessibility, you really, like I said, it's like a one-way, uh, like a rural dead end where this town sits. You just, I mean, you gotta travel some rural roads to get out the, out of the main roads and, it's not by any nice convenient highways. All right. All right. Okay. All right. There's that other bridge. There's some railroad cars. Yeah, it's that's getting really, getting really overgrown down there. You can hardly hardly make out the bridge. But it's in there. <laughs> Trust me, it's in that jungle somewhere. Okay. All right, we're gonna go ahead and get out of here. All right, we're gonna make a quick little stop up here. And just remember, since we're out this way anyway, little car dealership up here. Small country Chevrolet dealer. Uh, they have a little uh, used car section here. Just gonna check it out real quick. Look at this little white one. That's a pretty nice little car. That's that's pretty nice. That's kind of about the same size as a Ford Escape. Huh. Yeah, but I go. I think these are the brand new ones though. <laughs> I'm looking for something, something in the used department, please. You know what I found? A lot of these dealerships just don't have the inventory that they used to. I was up at the Ford dealer the other day, and it's, just, and it's a larger one. And I mean, they had some inventory, but I remember back when in places when dealerships just the lot was full, had so much inventory. They don't have a lot going on here. Okay, nothing that uh, interests me. One other stop down along River Road. I think we've got enough daylight, we might check it out real quick. All right, we're gonna sneak through the little town of Leechburg. I think it has two traffic lights. Right, eight pizza shops. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Probably eight bars. Ten churches. <laughs> you know how a lot of these uh, little towns are. There's a little building up here. It's a brick building up here on the right. It's railroad related. The railroad used to come through this part of town. But then tracks are long gone. But I like when the old structures uh, 
still exist, been repurposed. A big uh, auto repair center, at least part of it. Uh, that guy's retired. That whole car. Uh, that guy is retiring. Guy uh, used to do my inspections. All right, let's get out of town here. I used to live out here many years ago. Out on a, a road called Hungry Hollow Road. Oh, well, that's when the boys were little. Feel better? <laughs> you feel better? Oh, we had to stop. Yeah, it stop. I know what time of day it was getting to be. It gets to be evening. Bella says, uh, you know, I can take care of something. <laughs> so, so we did. All right, just past this building here on the left, uh, the Riverside Drive-In. In movies there. Kind of, kind of nice to still have one of those around. We're gonna, we're gonna have to go. We're gonna start going maybe see a couple movies this year. We'll go in the van. It'd be ideal. Back it in, swing the back doors open. Can hang out, lay on the bed. Uh, uh oh, I'm gonna stop here. All right. There's a uh, this road. There's a number. It's one of the roads where it's the number of used car lots around. Some have some real junkers in, but there's a couple that have some nice stuff. And here, this is weird. Okay, this place has three vehicles out here now. This this whole lot used to be packed. They, they were squeezed in here tight. Um, it's another lot that has super low inventory. I don't know what's going on. I don't know what's going on lately. But here is a, and we got three Fords. And I'm a Ford guy. And uh, I had one similar to this. I had a, a Ranger with the extended cab. Nice truck, but it's not uh, not really what I'm looking for now this is I, th this is like perfect all right we'll come back to that i'd love to have this car okay wow well, yeah it's a ford escape se uh with a little eco boost engine so it's a has a little turbo and uh what are these called those ford flex the ford flex uh yeah i'm not interested looks too much like a you don't know I, I don't care for them and uh there's a poultry shop here guy does real nice work a lot of custom work uh for custom cars old cars old classics new you know new stuff motorcycle seats uh you name it he's a really nice guy here on river road just between leechburg and vandergriff i'm curious i might have to come by here tomorrow look, look at this it's a what is it it's a 2014 uh with 95,000 miles on it that's probably that's probably about half life for it. it says it books for 9109 up to 11,340. He wants 8995. Call it $9,000. $9,000. But uh, man, I just love, I'd love to have an escape. Nice little four door with a hatchback. <laughs> That's it. Hmm. Yeah, we might have to come back to this tomorrow. Like I said, it's not all evening. We had a little mission. We had a little poo mission to take care of. Yeah, we might swing by tomorrow and see what his real price is. <laughs> they, it's typical. They, you know what, used car dealers, uh, you know, they built in some cushion of their price. You know, if he wouldn't come down 500 or 1,000. <laughs> if I said, hey, look, I got cash. What do you really want for it? But he'd come down. All right, then there's another guy up here, Shannon's. Uh, it's just a very small lot. Anything to grab my attention? No, 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 no. I wonder what it is with the uh, automotive uh, industry that uh, inventory's down 
new and used. Hmm. All right, just sneaking out of North Vandergrift. Oh, these are some old stomping grounds. <laughs> I tell you. Uh, uh, kind of a flood of memories when you get back into your old stomping grounds. I wasn't always as, you know, smart and responsible and stuff back then as I am now. <laughs> Alright, here's a car lot up here uh, that has the nicer stuff. Uh, some Jeeps, Honda, Chevy, more Jeeps, and Nissan. Let's see what's around the other side. That's where they keep all their trucks. Uh -huh. Trucks, 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 all trucks. Every single one of them. And then the uh, cars are out front. And I would like a hat. I'm looking for a hatchback. It, yeah, that black one is a hatchback, but it's a BMW. And I'm good. I don't want a BMW. Uh, the rest of those are all sedans. Oh, and they have some Jeeps up here. Nope. No thanks. Hmm. Oh, well. <laughs> At least we got to, got to go out for an evening ride and mess around a little bit. Alright, I think that's going to be it. We're going to go ahead and get some dinner. And, uh, call, call it a night. Wind this day down. So, thanks for coming along today on our mission. <laughs> we'll be back uh, real soon. Okay.